time for the lions. Tell them one story. Listen to the lion voice, yeah. Oh. The time has come for the lioness to tell her own story. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have to tell the people about Rastafari? <laughs> Light to the world. The king of kings and the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. I like himself. Where's right for you? Hey yo! Hey yo! Hear them high, hear the black king born the 23rd of July. So tell them guy who prays God up in the sky, it's a lie. The Almighty living on your knife. From ancient times, them are try. Them Romans throw them just up in them suit and ties. Criminals ain't got no how to buy they stole my people Then them come through without them genocide Are you talking about slavery? Them couldn't kill The lion where come conquer to the tribe cool. Go to tribulation, I your nice tribe See separation, I your nice still rise That's why we tell them in America Live Rastafari in every ghetto area We come to tell them in a Toronto Let me give you a little bit more an end to the evil days. There is a land that is far away from the modern centers of power, where the sun has always dominated. A land of 13 months of sunshine. A land of towering mountains that, until the modern era, was shrouded in mystery. A land more ancient than recorded history. This land is the land of the people with sun-kissed faces. The land known as Ethiopia. The ancient Greek historian Homer referred to the majestic realm south of Egypt as the land where the gods love to feast. Inhabitants of the land in 1892 called it Abyssinia. During the drought, the gods of Homer's writings were nowhere to be found as famine showed the land no mercy. The angel of death reigned unchallenged. All the kingdoms of the realm were affected. Famed leaders from the great houses and their august sovereign had no answers. Kingdoms of Gojam, Begemdir, and Shoah were forced into submission. The kingdoms of Tigray, Wolo, and Yeju were pummeled with punishment. Even the kingdom of Kaffa and the kingdom of Gondar, the capital of ancient kings, were brought to their knees. The drought had plagued Ethiopia and the city of Harar in particular since 1888. The coming of the rain was not a sudden event. Days earlier, black clouds had slowly amassed in the sky, signaling the coming relief to the years of drought. The sky grew dark, rain showered the earth. Falling rain was bringing an end to the evil days. Those evil days, or Kefukan, as the people throughout the kingdoms called them, had arrived with drought. The days and then the years of the Kafu Khan made them a demon's paradise, as, as if the omnipotent Almighty had forsaken the land where the gods loved to be. It was as if the angel of death's forces of darkness had been permitted to reign over the Almighty's peculiar treasure. The Lord of Flies let loose his armies, Parts of the land were seized by suffocating swarms of tetsi flies, while caterpillars and locusts destroyed most edible crops. A menacing plague accompanied the drought, killing 90% of the cattle in Ethiopia. In some places, the bodies of dead cattle seemed to stretch to the horizon, and the stench of death stifled the air. The dead cattle provided the perfect habitat for numerous diseases to thrive, smallpox, typhus, cholera, influenza, and it was not long before human bodies were added to the landscape. Disease impartially searched the crevices and corners of crowded cities, encampments, and villages alike. There were mass migrations across kingdoms as people uprooted from their ancient dwelling places to seek refuge from the relentless famine. So just a little style of how the book is written. Um, so you can see Haile Selassie's Ethiopia, um, this famine was so important because again, it's the, it's the opening um, scene of an epic tale, epic story that we have been blessed to be able to start to tell 
so that's just a little bit of the the facts that are in the book for more information do your research the kefu khan the the, the great um drought you know people like to blame his majesty for the drought in 1970s uh the propaganda that was put against him but if you don't know about the kefu khan and then you can see after in the 80s that another massive drought then you would know that um there's only so much that can be done when his majesty opened his borders for foreign journalists the hope was that he, they would be doing it to, to bring support to the country it was twisted into a smear campaign um, to discredit Haile Selassie the architect of the modern Ethiopia um, and then you have the nerve to come talk about why you feed him lie on them this is a disrespect that you get you know when you follow your purpose so as the Rastafari man standard um, just know that when you're on your purpose, they come with the BS sometime, and we have to be able to stand up um, and give thanks that uh, now uh, His Majesty, we can't see him physically again, but all over creation, you know, the youth have risen up, red, gold, and green, the line of Judah flag fly in every country. The works are rising and multiplying. Um, Rastafari is coming together um, in all different spaces. You know, we have many unity and unification initiatives happening. I'm part of many of them. So, uh, this is part of the glory. So, we give thanks, but this is again part of the history, part of the story that we must uh, transmit to our youth. Them, the Kefu Khan, the great famine that preceded the birth. This is one of the the miraculous, amazing facts that come with the origin story of Kadamawi Haile Selassie. So be sure to um, get in tune. We're going to come with a book club. We're going to go through, we're going to do some lives where we go through the chapters of the book. So get your copy now. Um, before we do that, we'll announce when that happens. Uh, we'll have panels of people talking about the book. You can follow along. Uh, ask questions, uh, we'll, we'll do some live streams, a uh, whole series of things around the book and, and content around the book here on the Lion's Voice. So get your copy so you can be a part of that. Um, it's going to be eyeful. We're going to do some deep dives into Ethiopia, Pan-African story, um, and how we can connect the dots as we move forward to repatriation and the ultimate liberation uh, and unification of the African continent and diaspora big up uh, i want to start writing volume two um, but we're going to need to build up financial resources because i want to for volume two be able to actually go to ethiopia and do some research at the university and at certain places so the more you support the channel and support the patreon um, the quicker we can get a volume two going and remember we are building the lion pride on patreon big up all of the Lion Pride on Patreon who have invested in the platform and building up the platform. We have big plans. We want to create uh, animation, feature films, all of those things are for the life of His Majesty to teach the next generation. Just saw uh, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. We never love certain things in, in it, but um, one of the things that we love is the style of animation. And we think, what could we do if we were telling our story, Rastafari, African stories with this uh, level of animation, how we could really penetrate the youth them and create great entertainment. And that is, you know, part of my mission here, building this platform. The Lion's Voice Network is to get to that level where we can produce. We're going to build a production studio in Africa. Um, so following this channel, you're going to follow that journey. Um, how you see I and I right now is not how you will see I and I in 10 years. You just know that. So big up everyone. Um, again, it's July. The earth strong of His Majesty is around the corner. We have some special content that we're planning um, for that timing. And again, we're just trying to ensure that we can do the best thing that we can do. Well, from to us, a son was born and a child was given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. 
and his name shall be called the Wonderful, Counselor, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Then we call him Christopher I when he was born, rain fall from the sky. Then we call him Christopher I when he was grown in near plains he fly. They call him Christopher I young break the chain, weep not, don't cry. Them call him List of for I read the Revelation chapter 5 verse 5 Then Born near the city of Harar The inspiration for Bob Marley's guitar People crowd him like some big superstar It no matter if a England or Cote d'Ivoire No matter if you're brown or black like a tar Haile Selassie, Sefi and all tribal paradigm Fee gather Mount Zion Fee drive solar car from the car Straight to Zanzibar Who we are? The sons of Christopher I When he was born, rain fall from the sky Christopher I when he was grown in airplanes he fly Then Christopher I lie down break the chain we not don't cry Then Christopher I we do revelation chapter 5 verse 5 Royal governor from the age of 13 years Leave the palace, figure back in a school with him peers He's the head without fear, he's one to be revered When them call his name then the heathen's here